Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? And I'm really happy and privileged to be here in London for the launch of the Huawei Mate 20 and the Mate 20 Pro. Now, what you're looking at right now is the Mate 20 Pro, and then this is the Mate 20. There are some obvious differences between the two, so let's go through a few of them before I get into the meat of this video. The Mate 20 is a bit easier to recognize. It has the fingerprint reader on the back, a more classic configuration, and it also is a bit wider, maybe a little bit fatter, because it has a full HD display that does not have the aspect ratio ratio that makes for a taller device, which we're used to in many flagships these days. Now on the Mate 20 Pro, that fingerprint reader has been put into that display and it rocks a Quad HD HDR ready display. The other thing you're going to notice right off the bat and something you'll see throughout this video is that the notch is different between the two. You have a teardrop over on the Mate 20, which only houses the front facing camera. And over on the Mate 20 Pro, you have more bits and pieces up there, which is why the notch is bigger. Okay, so when it comes to my full review of these devices, once I get my hands on the Mate 20 Pro, you know that my format is generally in asking the question, who is this for? But in this hands-on video with what we have to work with at the moment, we're going to ask the question, who might this phone be for? So go ahead and let me know, based upon all of the content you're probably seeing about the Mate 20 Pro by now, uh, who you think this phone might be for. Let that be known in the comments down below, and I might include it in my full review. All right, so there are a few pretty obvious ones. So let's start off with the design of the phone and say that this phone is for the fashionable. The Mate 20 Pro in particular comes in a number of different awesome looking colors. You have the black edition, you also have the twilight edition that comes back, but you also get a couple of new additions, including this emerald green, which has a textured backing, which Huawei is calling the hyper optical pattern. It provides a little bit of texture to the backing, and if you scratch it, it feels like vinyl and actually makes that noise that you get when you're scratching a vinyl record. These are only available on the green and blue editions, which also have their own unique type of gradients, much like the Twilight Edition, which I still think looks pretty awesome. The Mate 20 Pro, like I said before, is also a bit slimmer. It just feels really nice in the hand, and it's almost like a Samsung Galaxy S9 kind of melded together with an Oppo Find X. Despite that notch, you get a lot of screen on here and it's in a package that's pretty compact. Now you can say power user or spec hungry because the spec sheet on this thing is pretty insane. Both of the phones have the Kirin 980, which is Huawei's in-house processor. A seven nanometer process is accompanied by a dual NPU, which enhances the artificial intelligence Huawei already had in the P20. This dual MPU is going to help not only with the processes across EMUI, but also in the camera, which gets a 2.0 version of its AI camera. That Kirin 980 is backed up by the Mali G76 and has six gigabytes of RAM, backing it up with 120 gigabytes of onboard storage. However, you can also bolster that with a micro SD card. But then the power hungry are going to really like that the Mate 20 Pro has a 4200 milliamp hour battery, which is a huge battery, especially on a phone that feels pretty slim and is not too big all around. And the Mate 20 is still able to hold its own with a 4000 milliamp hour battery, which should feel like the standard when it comes to our flagship devices anyway. The Mate 20 Pro does include wireless charging as well, which is great, but then there's an even more insane feature here in that you can do wireless reverse charging. That's right, the back of this phone is actually able to route some of its power out to yet another wireless charging device. And even though not a lot of you out there may have two different phones that have wireless charging, the Mate 20 Pro and something else, this is the demo that we have to prove that this wireless reverse charging works. Clearly there are going to be some products that Huawei wants to make chargeable from the back of this phone, so we're looking forward to seeing what those will be. So I'm sure you've been seeing it already and it's been on your mind, so let's talk about how these phones are made for photographers. There are some key differences in the camera packages, so let's go through those specs really quick. The main camera on the Mate 20 is going to have 12 megapixels at f1.8 aperture, and then you have an addition of a wide angle, an ultra wide angle lens at 16 megapixels, and then a telephoto lens at 8 megapixels. On the Mate 20 Pro, you still get the main, the ultra wide, and the telephoto, but those are 40 megapixels, 20 megapixels, and then the same 8 megapixels, respectively. Okay, so you've already heard what might make me excited about this camera, and it's the fact that it has an ultra-wide lens. But it is being triggered when the camera thinks that you need it, thanks to that AI. You have the main lens, and then it goes from one to three times to way more times zoom because of the ultra-zoom capability that was introduced in the P20. And then you have the ultra-wide at 0.6 compared to the main lens. Huawei have stated that even though the monochrome sensor of the previous phones worked really well, the sensors are getting better and better, especially as tuned by Leica, so they don't have to lean on that particular configuration anymore, hence the inclusion of an ultra-wide angle. 
But if you still want your monochrome shots, there is still that mode, along with a bunch of other modes that you can use in order to get the best possible shot. For example, the ultra wide angle, if you get really close to something, can actually trigger a macro mode as it has a very short focal distance. And then you can get into some really fun modes when it comes to video. While there might not be a wide angle on the front facing camera, you can still use the wide angle for some really dramatic shots, especially in video, and then turn on the AI color mode in order to get people in color and the AI will black out everything else. But let's not keep the front facing camera out of the loop as this phone will clearly be pretty great for the selfie lover. Huawei is pretty well known for putting a lot of modes or in a lot of settings in their front facing camera by way of beauty modes. And if you crank all of those sliders to max, then you can get a pretty different looking self. For example, the whole face thinning thing. I mean, I'm sure you've seen this kind of stuff before and I cranked it all the way to max and it did look pretty gnarly, uh, but you still get the portrait mode on the front, which should be great. And at 24 megapixels for the front facing camera, I'm sure that there's going to be quite a bit of detail here, as long as you're not trying to smooth out or soften everything. But the other reason why I want to bring this up is because the face is just as important on this phone for biometrics. There's a 3D depth sensing camera, as I mentioned, on the front facing camera. That's what makes that notch bigger on the Mate 20 Pro. And that's being used to unlock the phone in a very fast manner as it's always looking for your face based upon your 3D depth data. It is already pretty quick and you can see here that I've enabled an option for it to wake the phone when I bring the phone up to my face. The face unlock is already triggering and it's going to get me right into EMUI immediately. Now, if face unlock is not really your thing, well, we have a new type of fingerprint sensor and it's inside of the display. I did set it up on a Mate 20 Pro and uh, it was pretty cool to be able to just press down on the display in order to get that to happen. Now there is one particular area that it's going to tell you where to press, which is perfectly fine. It's not easy to get a large sensor underneath there. So you do have one particular area and EMUI is going to tell you exactly where to press, but I didn't have to press down too hard. I just had to get my finger on top of that little circle and I was in. And finally, we'll end with EMUI as we talk about how this phone might be for the mindful. Now, this is going to be mainly about the digital wellness portions where the software is going to track how long you are inside of an application at any given time. This is a feature that is available on Android proper at this point, and digital wellness is something I think we should all be looking into, especially as we get more addicted to our smartphones. I mean, there's a lot to offer in the Mate 20 Pro, so I wouldn't be surprised if you're playing with it all the time. But Huawei themselves were also pretty mindful about just how much they've been putting into their devices. EMUI is still a robust operating system, don't get me wrong, but Huawei have reduced the number of items that are in the settings area so that it doesn't feel like such a daunting experience. But clearly EMUI is trying to make it so that you have all of the options available if you want to cater the experience to what you want, being more mindful about your usage, but also having control over it. Clearly the Mate 20 Pro is a beast of a device and depending on where you come from in your smartphone usage, you probably have everything you need just from this one phone that Huawei is trying to pack everything into. Pricing and availability will be in the description down below once we get that information at the event. We didn't really get it beforehand, it's going to be announced on stage. Look forward to my full review where I ask the question, who is this for as I get the Mate 20 Pro and put it through its paces so you can look forward to that and all of the content that I've been doing this month. There's a lot of stuff that's been happening. So check out the videos that are appearing right now, head over to my channel and make sure you check out some more and subscribe to it if you haven't already. And with that, I'm gonna call it on this one. Hope you enjoyed this first look. Who might this phone be for? Well, apparently the list is pretty long. So until my full review, I will remind you, to enjoy your tea, everybody.